Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You know, I'm certainly a partisan, a lot of people call me a partisan, and honestly, it's not something that I'm running away from, it's not something I'm embarrassed by, because it's true, I am a partisan. I don't do journalism, I do editorial pieces. And here's where I'm going with this, just because I'm an activist, in a way, doesn't mean I can't get along with the other side, it doesn't mean I have a closed mind and I'm not listening or I can't give credit where credit is due, and I'm sure a lot of my longtime followers know this, just because I'm on this side doesn't mean I don't applaud when the other side or individuals on the other side do or say the right thing. When Bill Maher hits the nail on the head, I'm the first person to record a video essentially singing his praise. Throughout Anna Kasparian's political evolution, I've done the same thing, and I've even recorded videos that have been positive and supportive of some of the stuff that people like Cenk Uger have said or done, because I try to be fair. I'm not partisan or loyal to any political party or politicians. I'm only loyal to one thing, ideas and things that I believe are correct or right. And so anyways, I'm sure you guys get where I'm going with this. Regardless of what side you're on, if what you're saying is based, I'm going to give you center stage, I'm going to give you props, and that's exactly what we got here. We got a clip from a longtime left-wing strategist on CNN, and frankly, I mean, she took the words directly out of my mouth. This moment was absolutely incredible. In fact, she had the entire CNN panel shook, silent. You could hear a drop of water. I want to show you guys this incredible moment. I want to give credit where credit is due, even if these individuals are on the other side this right here is based we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right folks so first off we need a little bit of context before we get into the actual clip basically the left is panicking their internal data must be absolutely horrendous especially when it comes to the demographics to the cross tabs we've seen many polls suggesting that donald trump is pulling greater black support than ever before and of course the kamala harris play for president part of the strategy was probably to appeal to black voters it's not working i think the left is realizing that and so they've mobilized barack obama now to go out there campaigning essentially talking down to black men and telling them who to vote for because of the color of their skin. The community is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly. And say that when you have a choice that is this clean, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. You said to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land. Political talking points like this are obviously condescending, insulting, frankly, in my view, racist and disgusting. And apparently, I'm not the only one. Apparently, that's not a partisan view. We've got Nina Turner here. I'm sure you guys know who Nina Turner is. She used to work for the Bernie Sanders campaign. She's an avid leftist. I even describe her more as a socialist. Take a look. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? A tour of media to appeal to men. They need to appear, appeal to the needs of the voters. And so when I was a delegate for President Obama in both of his elections in Ohio, right now the vice president is down 11 points in Ohio, even though I, I fully expect President Trump to take Ohio as he did twice, but to be down 11 points compared to President Biden, that is a problem. But this other issue I want to bring up is a problem too. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? Now, a lot of love for former President uh, 
uh, Obama, but for him to single out black men is wrong. And some of the black men that I have talked to have their reasons why they want to vote a different way. And even if some of us may not like that, we have to respect it. So unless President Barack Obama is going to go out and lecture every other group of men from other identity groups, my message for Democrats is don't bring it here to black men who by and large don't vote much differently from black women. And what, as a politician, we should be trying to get all voters to vote. And hopefully there are a few good men out there who do care about the stripping away of some of women's bodily autonomy. But this is wrong for President Obama. It is a wrong course for the Harris Waltz campaign to lay at the feet of black men when they have their reasons. In 2020, the vice president was labeled a do cop, you, as we know. But do you think, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Nina, but do you think he's right? that some of the reason, one of the reasons is because they don't like the idea of a It woman might be some, say, listen, house. black men are socialized in the same society as any other, any other man. So yes, is misogyny maybe a part of it? But again, is President Obama and is the Harris Waltz campaign going to lecture yeah. other male groups in the same way that they're lecturing this is black not she had that panel speechless, and she's totally right on the frickin' money. She asked the question, why are black men being lectured to? Black men being belittled? And that's exactly what it is. I don't even need to really explain it. Vote for Kamala Harris because you and her share a common skin complexion. That is essentially, in essence, what Barack Obama said. It's an insult to your intelligence. And frankly, I think a lot of people are just sick of it. You know, the way black men feel, I think can be described by a clip that popped up in my timeline here of Charles Barkley. I voted Democratic my entire life, my entire life. And I'm starting to think like, man, everybody in my hometown is still poor. Yeah. Man, all the black neighborhoods are still poor. They all go to schools and we've been voted Democratic for 59 years. I've been on the earth. Voting for the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is the definition of insanity and people have had enough. They've been told their entire life, vote for the Democrat. It's going to make your life better. It's going to solve all the problems in the inner city. But the Democrat track record is horrible. In many cases, in many neighborhoods, things are worse now than they were before. People have serious issues and they're starting to research a lot of the top issues of the election. They have legitimate grievances and now they're being told, put that all aside, stop being a sexist, and vote for Kamala Harris because she's just like you. Give me a freaking break and it's even worse, I mean way worse, with Kamala Harris as the subject. Because only recently now is she claiming this deep connection to black American roots. Throughout her entire career, she was an Indian woman. The headlines were always the first Indian woman elected. And now all of a sudden Kamala Harris is talking about Tupac and Biggie, washing her collard greens in the bathtub, and faking an accent at these events. It's a slap in the frickin' face. And people are frustrated with it. They're frustrated with the whole process. But most importantly, I think people are done with the insulting, condescending narrative. Vote for us because of the color of your skin. I'm asking myself the question, why is that only with black voters? Like in a lot of these instances, just change the context a little bit. Could you imagine some big time politician, possibly a former president saying, vote for Donald Trump as a white male because he's a white male just like you. First of all, the left would be throwing a hissy fit, claiming that's the most racist thing that's ever been said. And secondly, I think most people, most white men would frankly tell you to F off. You don't vote based on skin color. You don't vote based on what neighborhood someone grew up in. You vote based on policy and track record. And frankly, I think it's racist to suggest anything different. But but again, conclusion here, aside from the condescending element, the insult to voters, the insult to our intelligence, the racism, my take from this situation is that Democrats know they're losing. They're flailing and failing. They don't know what to do anymore, and so they're resorting to this kind of desperate act. They don't have track record to run on. They don't have competence to run on. Kamala Harris has done an abysmal job as a prosecutor, as a senator, as a vice president, and now as a presidential candidate. She's just not convincing people to vote for her. They don't have anything, and so... This is what they're doing. And of course, you know that they only pull this card out when their back's against the wall. And so obviously, they must be seeing something in their internal polling data that has them panicking when it comes to certain voting demographics. But what I think they don't realize is that it's not just black men. See, black men aren't too different from white men and Asian men and Hispanic men, Indian men. We're all just men with all the same priorities. We want to live good lives. We want a good economy, strong leadership, public safety. And obviously, most men just don't think that Kamala Harris can deliver any of that. And no amount of race baiting and racial pandering will change that. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you on the next one.